I bet you're stoked, Michael. Good I evening, everybody. I am to do this. Yes, I I'm really excited about doing like an open forum thing where we can kind of discuss it instead of being in between games every two three minutes trying to sneak in a few things here and there. I'm excited about sitting down. I wish I had coffee instead of water. But uh, I'm yeah. excited about sitting down and just talking about the whole thing. Me too. Why don't I'm you have coffee? Good. I ran out of creamer today, so I don't <laughs> I don't have coffee. And I can't uh, drink it without creamer. Dead. Yeah. You're going to be dead. It'll be all right. Though. All right, guys. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Yeah, we've been talking about doing this ever since before we started in the stream this is one of the things we'd like to roll out at some point when we started our channel we're about two months in now i don't know the exact anniversary of when it is in april but we're somewhere around two months now uh this is something that we've just been talking about doing for a long time creating that open forum where we could sit here and discuss different news and events going in the gaming world and other things in the entertainment world as well but we're going to start off with gaming because we have a lot of catching up to do as far as that goes so we're going to do this every week, uh, every Thursday for like the first hour or so of the stream. If it runs a little bit longer, if it runs a little bit shorter, we're just going to keep it about around an hour. Now we're just going to basically go down through uh, the previous weeks, uh, different news topics around the video game world, different things that's come out. We'll talk, we'll give you guys our takes on it. We'll hear your guys' takes as well in the comments um, regarding the different things we're going to be going over. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a weekly thing every Thursday. So Adol, what are your overall Thoughts. Are you excited about this? Something about getting this on? Yeah, definitely excited about getting the podcast going. Uh, there's just so much stuff going on, especially being with the next gen consoles coming out and everything like that. Yes. You know, just got a lot to cover. A lot of people out there with, you know, mixed feelings about, you know, obviously things going on in the world and how it's affecting the entertainment industry and the gaming industry, uh, obviously. So as we get a little bit political <laughs> yes yeah yeah, yeah 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 so as we get a little bit closer to doing like the xbox live event we wanted to do this with a playstation event but we just didn't get this started till this week but with like the new events that are coming out like the xbox event we're going to try to do a live stream of that depending on when the time falls if not we'll try to do some kind of reaction video like hour long depending on how long the conference is and we'll try doing that for these upcoming games going forward all right so just going to go ahead and jump in to this we have several topics that we want to talk about uh, to start off the stream tonight. The first one being Cyberpunk being delayed. Well, before we go to that, before we go to that, we are going to put the podcast and stuff up on everywhere that we can find podcasts, on Spotify, on iTunes, on Stitcher, all that good stuff. Um, so this will just be like a more of a companion podcast for the actual stream. Uh, this isn't going to overtake the stream in any way. This is just going to be um, a companion to that in a way. So if you're, content, yeah. yeah, just additional content. You can find the full episode videos on our YouTube channel as well. Um, so if you're maybe watching us on YouTube or listening to the podcast and you want to join into the stream and be a part of the actual episode, just go ahead and join in. Hey, what's up, Kill? We just got on, man. Uh, yeah, man. So let's go ahead and get it started hey, off with. Back, Kill. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, let's go ahead and get it started off with Cyberpunk being delayed. Oh, right. So. We just got the recent so let's news. Pull that up. Let's pull that up. The initial reason for the delay. So the big talk right now, what they're oh. doing is that they want to uh, just do more refining, do more bug fixes. But assuming the main reason why they're doing this, as far as the delay being, is that they are, with the current state of things going in the world with everybody with the remote location, working from home kind of thing, it's putting a lot of delays on a lot of games and movies and other things in the entertainment industry. Uh, that's probably the main reason that they said why this is currently being delayed. This isn't the first time that this game yeah. was delayed, though. It was originally pushed from April to September, and now until November. Right. You know, it's important, especially being in being that long. It's like creating a game. Just to, if you just think about in the entirety of the game building process, working through the bugs, polishing it up, making it look, you know, polishing it, making it look good, really playable and smooth. The last 5% of creating a game is the bread and butter. You know, that is important. So giving them time, not griping about it, I understand people are mad about it, especially with the whole, uh, the Xbox, like our current gen, the special edition uh, Cyberpunk consoles, mm -hmm. buying that and not being able to play Cyberpunk, you know, on it till the next gen release. That's kind of upsetting for some people. I understand that entirely, but 
we got to understand they are putting the finishing touches on this game. It's going to be a masterpiece. CD Projekt Red is doing the right thing. We got to trust the devs here. Yes. And it's been five years since we've gotten a game from CD Projekt Red, The Witcher, in 2015. So this being 2020, this may get bumped again. We're still five months away now from its actual release, so there's a chance it may get bumped again into next year. But I wasn't entirely looking forward to playing this game on current gen and then having to right. replay it possibly on the next gen console. So with them doing this, I'm just going to buy the next gen consoles and play it on that and just completely forget about this gen. So at least yeah. there's that. I mean, it, so much more power on the next gen. I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it'd be almost criminal not to completely <laughs> play it on the next gen. Obviously, if you can afford it. Yep. But uh, it's just going to be such a big game. If it even touches the Witcher size, it's going to be disgusting. And that it's like good... our bread and butter, Michael. Synth wave, baby. Retro wave. Oh, we're going to be live streaming the hell out of this game for sure. It is kind of. To go along with your point about the console, that Cyberpunk Edition console they're going to be doing. Um, as far as, like, that console is going to be an Xbox One X. And they're supposed to have the console launch with the game. Or, you, you know, you got a digital code with that game. But now, mm -hmm. since this game is pretty much going to be launching alongside the new consoles, why would you want to buy that previous gen console with this game? Why not just buy a Series X or a PS5 with this game on it? Why buy that last generation exactly. console? Right. I mean, if you think about it like that, I mean, I still understand the just the timing is now off, essentially. But, I mean, the next-gen console, come on. Yeah. SSDs, SSDs are going to change console gaming. They changed PC gaming in a big way. And being as a guy who just, <laughs> it sounds bad, recently upgraded his PC from a hard drive to an SSD, I thoroughly understand... Uh, what it does and guys if you haven't <laughs> you know it's 2020 get an ssd it's 2020 okay don't be yeah, like big, me big difference uh so we're watching some of the gameplay in the background as we're talking about it but um all in all this isn't in my opinion this isn't a bad thing they can take as long as they want they can push this thing up to next year for all i care we're gonna have plenty of games to play later on this year Missing out on this one game is not going to completely ruin the holiday season for us as far as gaming goes. So if they need more time, go for it. That's all I'm right. saying. I agree. At the end of the day. Thousand percent. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next the next topic here, and that is going to be Apex. Possibly going right. to cross-play. All right, so... Yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of rumors community. about this. Yeah, split community yeah. right now. What are your thoughts on games in general going cross-play between having console and PC harmonizing as one. Yeah, when this gets to YouTube, guys, put your opinions below in the, in the comment section. We'll review it, you know, look at it, interact with you guys. Uh, but as far as chat right now, what do you guys think? You guys think it's going to be cross-play enabled? Is that their big reveal? Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy, <laughs> he thinks it's going to be cross-play? Yep, they that is the talks today. right now. Yeah, oh, he said they announced it today. Well, that's good. So what are your thoughts on it? It going crossplay. Good, bad. Doyle, your thoughts? I think it's going to be hilarious. I think a lot of a lot of uh, Apex is not really a game that uh Yeah, I think there's good and bad. I think Apex is not really a game where controller players like excel. I could be wrong and and educated in this. But as far as I know, the aim assist in Apex is not nearly as nasty as COD. So I feel as though when they cross-play with PC, controller players are going to get cracked on. That's just my opinion. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I could be wrong there, but that's just my initial thought. Yeah, I'd be curious to see if they do like have give you the option, at least, to say, I don't want to play with a PC player, let me just play with console players. Or same thing with PC, if they they say, I don't want to play with a console player, I just want to play with PC players. If they're going to give them the option or not, or if it's just going to be completely mandatory, like some options in, a, in what's it called? Uh, Call of Duty's doing yeah, right now. Yeah. Interesting fact here, guys. So today I was discussing uh, this with another streamer, and uh, yeah, the, the hacking for sure. But let me finish this quick. Uh, I asked, that's like, why is it 
they haven't released a statement about it or nothing. Why is crossplay? You cannot disable crossplay for Xbox. And he made a valid point. He's like, you know, it could be player count. I never really thought about that. It could be a player count thing. You, they're trying to get more people in the lobby. So I don't know if that is accurate, but it, it's the best explanation anybody has given me. Uh, let's see here. Malawan, it just sucks that the hackers and cheaters all come from PC, so that's going to open that up. Yeah, it is. That's going to be that's going to be a whole other thing. Hopefully they've narrowed down a lot of the... Uh, since they, it's been out on PC, hopefully they've really... You know, put some defenses up to block against that. I don't know how creating crossplay is going to affect it necessarily from the cheater side. If it makes it easier for them to get in there and uh, you know cause a miss and mayhem, but uh, pump on them blueberries. That's yeah. That that's the biggest thing that respawn at EA is going to have their guard up about uh, because you've seen at Activision how hard they've struggled with people using aimbots and different mods and stuff like that with COD. How much they've struggled with it here recently and. You know, we'll see if EA and Respawn have those same exact issues and what they do, but if that is the main reason why they're doing it, it's because they're trying to get more of a population in their servers. You know, that makes sense, but mm -hmm. Apex is a pretty popular game. I, I really don't think that's... I don't think that's the reason, though, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Jeremy. Hackers and cheaters all going for PC. There's really not a whole lot of options you could do as far as... Um, yeah. Console-wise. Sure. You know. Yeah, quick shout-out here, guys. Everybody in the chat, uh, kill, all right... Jeremy, Average Joe, guys, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're just doing, we're starting off our first inaugural podcast, Ready Part 2 podcast, just so you guys are uh, aware. But again, appreciate you guys stopping by in the chat. Oh, another thing too, though, EA. If we're going to talk about EA, the, the second thing that comes out of your mouth when you talk about EA is bugs. <laughs> yeah. And we can go, uh, it is, man. Battlefield was almost bugged at launch to destruction. Completely scarred the brand. Battlefield yep. 5 did. I love Battlefield 5 just because it's Battlefield and I'm a fanboy. But bugs in EA. EA takes so long to fix bugs. I don't know if it's just like a resource thing or if they prioritize differently for certain titles, but they have a problem with that. And uh, if there's any amount of bugs, like there was in Battlefield 5 when they enable crossplay for Apex, there's going to be some issues. So uh, we can just hope for the best. Hopefully they'll address that as quick as possible. Michael, what do you think about that? They had crossplay in Battlefield Five. No. Oh, okay. Thank God. Say, those guys suck. Who knows? Because we were destroying them. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> yeah. Big time, for man. Sure. No, I agree though. Yeah, I'll I'd... see you, man. Project Cars Two is a good game, dude, for sure. I I agree though. I'm not sure if it is a a resource issue if that is going to be the problem um but EA has so many companies and there's so many employees that work for them and i don't think they're i don't think apex is very low on their list i think it's one of their most popular games they got right now so we'll see how it goes um definitely going to try jumping in to see what the current state of things is whenever it drops i think all right 44 said it'll be in crossplay this fall um so we'll see how it goes down for sure See, Jeremy Maliwan, how do you guys feel about EA announcing that they are finally working on a new skate? Doyle, I tagged you on something on Facebook regarding this. I know you used to play Skate it, 3 it. back in the day. How do you feel about this? Yeah, this is kind of out of my skate. wheelhouse. No, I'm excited about it, you know? I think a lot of people for a long time have needed wanted a new skate game because it's like, I mean, skating is not dying by no means. So they need to put something out there and keep pushing that content. It's like a dead area of gaming. You know, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, 3, 4, whatever, Wasteland, Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Those were all bangers, straight bangers. And then Skate, Skate was good, man. A little more technical than Tony Hawk. And then now they're finally working on it. I just hope they do it right. I hope they do it justice. Because I'm going to be honest with you guys. Here lately, EA has not been, like, top developer for me. It's been, it's been, they've been on the downside. They've been, to me, they're, like, going down. <laughs> But I hope that Jesus. it doesn't keep going this way. Like, let's get the reboot. Get get a get a battlefield in there that's a modern battlefield. Reboot battlefield. Reboot skate. Make EA make make Apex crossplay like they're gonna do and do it bug free. And if there is bugs, address it. Do that. If you can do that, I think EA is gonna be back on their way. So the the only thing that really caught me whenever I seen that they were uh, working on a new skate. Was this is coming right on the heels a couple a couple months ago when they announced that there was gonna be a remaster of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two, 
and now we're hearing a new skate games and in development yeah, right that's, that's no coincidence. That's no coincidence. They're just surrounding it with like hype and clout, you know? Yeah. So it'll be interesting. I know you used to play like, was it Skate 3 or Skate 4? I'm not yeah, sure how many I there played were. all of them pretty much. Jesus. So speaking of EA, now EA's had this Star Wars contract. I think they're going in like year six or seven right now on a 10 year contract controlling the Star Wars EP or EP IP for gaming and they've really only done a couple uh, mobile games and they've done star wars battlefronts uh one and two these newer reboots they got and of course they did fallen order which was uh or jedi fallen Order, which is a banger that game was absolutely amazing but we did just get a little uh, three days ago on monday an announcement for star wars squadrons we're gonna go ahead and play some b-roll in the Ooh. background for you guys uh of this oh my game gosh, guys but if you haven't seen this Oh my god, all I have to say. But the whole concept of this, this has been a dream for mine. If you guys have played some of the older Star Wars games, uh, I think it was like Jedi Starfighter, some of the old N64 games, where you used to actually operate an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter, you know, what have you, and you used to do different activities and different missions and stuff. This game is actually very multiplayer based. There is going to be a campaign, what they announced, but there... <laughs> There is also going to be a, it's multiplayer, so it's five person multiplayer, and you guys are all kind of working together to do different things in this world. Yeah, so, what squad. are your initial thoughts? Yeah, the squad. What are your initial thoughts, Dwayne? Get the freaking squad out! I'm sorry, I'm getting out! This hits home with me. Thank God they have took advantage of space fight, like space flight and space fighting. Mm -hmm. They made the game for N64. Can't even remember, it's like called Jedi Fighter. And that's all you do, you fly around in your thing and you kill the other people. Okay, now you got a whole squad. I want to know how deep it's going to go. I'm going to follow this so tightly. Oh my God, it's going to be tighter than a duck's ass, guys. I mean, I want to see what type of attachments they have. Okay, how, how, how deep can you customize your X-Wing? Your character, does he have attributes? Your squad, I mean like, I just, and the game modes. The game modes are going to be unfathomable. Like take out the bomber, blow up the Death Star, do all this other stuff. Oh my God, I'm so excited, guys. So just what looking are, at some of, the, some of your ideas. So looking at some of the gameplay, it looks like the majority of the gameplay, if not maybe all, is first person. You are in the cockpit, flying. I haven't really seen a whole lot of third person where you're looking at a behind view of the actual craft. It looks like you're mostly in the cockpit fighting. You like, you know, red five, red five. They're on, they're on my ass. They're on my ass. You're looking at your different little monitors. You're looking at your, uh, you know, see where different people are at your radar and stuff. You're looking at different temperature and gauges on your craft. What the hell, dude? Oh, God. I'm running hot. Dude, on my body right now. It's just like, I'm so excited for this. Just looking at the B-roll and seeing all these little meters and these lights and these freaking RGBs, I'm just like, you're probably going to have to pay attention to all those. You're like, I got left wing damage. I'm going to need you to take my left flank and try to get yeah, your exactly. shield. Oh, my God. This Why, looks so dude? cool, man. EA and hit a gold mine, guys. Yes, and so this will be the fourth major game in the Star Wars franchise that they're going to be putting out in their contract. This looks amazing, dude. The camp, this comes out on October, I think it's 2nd? Maybe? Something like that? This, oh, so there is some character design here. Um, doesn't, look like, doesn't look like it just goes into too, into too much depth with your, uh, let me stop, let me stop it right there. Let me stop right there. So it doesn't look like it goes into... I, I, haven't, I haven't watched the whole thing all the way through. I've You're read fun. my ass off about it, but I have not watched the whole trailer. You're fun. So I want I wanted to stop it here. Oh, you got a little bobblehead on your dash? Oh yeah, my so god. You could like customize Ooh. your cabin, have different bobbleheads and stuff, have some furry dice hanging from the top. It looks like there is some uh customability, I don't even know if that's a word, with your character. Yeah. Not so much like face stuff. You kinda of, like choose your race and yeah. you choose your outfit and stuff. And you choose if you're fighting mm -hmm. for the Empire, if you're one of the rebels. I wonder if that's a character, if you get character attributes. Like certain certain people have quicker reflexes. Say Or say they have a bigger field of vision because maybe their eyes are a little bit bigger than a human. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something, I'm getting, I'm getting wild here, but I gotta point out right here on the ship loadout components, there's 60. a tractor beam right there. There's, there's a 60. tractor beam. I know, dude, that's insane. But they have a tractor beam, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be tractor beaming people. That's so all are I know. you holding right in? You're gonna bomb. Them. So initial, are you Team Empire 
or are you team rebels and chat i want to know what you guys what team you're going to be on to are you gonna be with the rebellion or for the empire duel what about you oh what good, are you i'm the good we're the good guys we're gonna be flying that x-wing sucker you're right we're flying the freaking x-wing dude yes we're gonna be we in there like for the dark side we're gonna be like luke skywalker we're gonna get a scene set up too so it's gonna be like the, the, us in a cockpit and we're gonna switch between views and you're just gonna be sitting in the cockpit <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna who's be Obi Wan? Who's Anakin? <laughs> the real question here. Don't try it. You got more of the Ewan. You got more of the Ewan look, yeah, and I got more of like no Star Wars character ever. Uh, but you know, we'll I think I accept that. I think I accept that though. I'm I'm fine with Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor is he's a good looking dude. All right. <laughs> Are you excited about the uh, look? Dogfight mode. What is this? Dogfight mode. Oh god, we're going to this now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look at this, dude. Is this a one v one, me bro? I don't know. I don't know if this is like five v five with your squadron. This is gonna be immortalized on YouTube. Joe just got affiliated. Average Joe twenty two. So give him a shout out. So follow Congrats, him on Twitch, man. guys. Uh, he just got affiliated. Joe, are you setting that up tonight? Because if uh, if you are, we're gonna get that first sub. I guarantee you that. Congrats, bro. Congrats, this looks man. awesome. You it, dude. Fleet battles? I'm curious yeah, how big nutty. how big the scope of the multiplayer is going to be. Is this going to be 5-on-5? Five five, or is it going to be, you know, maybe 50-on-50 50 50 with a bunch of different squadrons on each side? I'm curious, dude. Please no 50-50. No 50-50? Hell no. 50-50? Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I can't say that because no one has ever done anything like this. Like in modern, you know, yeah. modern history. <laughs> it's no, not you're wrong. Right. I say like that. No it was PS2. It, so... it was PS2, man. Exactly. Exactly. So all I'm saying is I don't know how chaotic it's going to be. I'm not going to know what the meta is. Like there is no preset meta. These guys have nothing to copy. What are they going to copy? Are they gonna copy Ace Combat? Put lasers on it? Like, what are they gonna do? They gotta come. They gotta make this from the ground up. No, this is their this is their own thing. Completely. And I respect the shit out of that. I respect the absolute <laughs> crap out of that because, I mean, dude, people have been just copying and piggybacking forever. Like, I want something fresh. I want something new. That's why I'm excited for Starfield. Oh yeah. Seriously. For That's sure. why I'm so excited about Cyberpunk and Starfield and all that other stuff. I agree. It's it's right, fresh. Man. It's fresh new stuff. If Starfield's anything like this, dude, imagine you're sitting there. Imagine like combining a what was that game we used to play where you you're on the planets and stuff and you're building stuff, and then you go take, build a rocket to go to a different planet. What was that? Called? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Astroneer, Astroneer. Imagine it's like Astroneer. You know, but of course like a really heavy, beautiful campaign. But say you're on one planet. You start to build up your little craft, like a little X-Wing looking thing, and then you fly into space. You go to these different command centers, you know, and you just kind of fly around the galaxy, dude. That's what I want to see from uh, Starfield. That's what I want to see. Me too. 100%, man. Me too. I want, I want to be a dirty, grimy, intergalactic explorer, ready to go find and pillage the world's resources, that I ever, whatever I find. I want to trade it, okay? I want to trade three rocks that are worth money for a trash can. I want to sell the trash can to a dude that likes trash cans. And he's going to give me more money. And then we'll buy something with that money. <laughs> you're just going to trade your way up like Dwight Schrute? I'm going to I'm gonna trade my way straight to the top. Jesus. I'm a grubby guy. That's All what right. I'm excited about, man. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about... So, last thing with this day one is this a day one playing or is this a day one game for you ea squadrons Star Wars. Star Wars squadron. yes day one yes that's a day one 24 hour grind oh oh and a 24 hour so, possibly stay tuned for that and uh speaking of grinds anybody in chat i think we got a pretty big announcement to make for everybody in here uh, if anyone's got, if everyone's got ears on us right now, and uh, for YouTube, don't know how quick we're gonna get this up, but also to uh, anybody on YouTube wants to come over and follow us on our Twitch, we are going to be doing a Michael, take it away. <laughs> so next Friday, guys. Now our little protocol droid boy, 
droid boy a little pro call droid he's gonna be yeah. announcing it throughout the stream tonight as well but on june 26th at 8 p.m central time i think it's 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific we're gonna be doing a 12 hour follower giveaway stream for call of duty yep. and every two hours we're gonna be giving away 1000 cod points on the stream every two hours to a follower in the chat we're gonna be giving away 1000 cod points to each people so to each person so there's six possibilities six chances for you to get 1000 cod points throughout the duration of this stream and that is going down right. next friday and jeremy maliwan also thank you for the inspiration we can't give you we can't not give you a little bit of credit on this for the brainstorm session but next friday guys yeah. doyle for sure jam thanks thanks for the idea man as always buddy uh there is a couple different stipulations obviously first you have to be followed to the channel you don't have to be like active in the chat you just have to follow the channel i mean we'd like you to be active in the chat just with the community obviously uh but you have to be following the channel and the second thing is you can't win two thousand dollar ones back to back so you have six opportunities to win okay if we got one dude in the chat he's not gonna rack up 6k cop points you know all night long so but anyways so everyone's gonna get an opportunity so just be present in the chat let's come in. <laughs> joe that's you you're always in the damn chat you'd be the guy to get to 6k yeah just come by stop by let's do it let's do it let's grind it out let's get the wins let's have a good time let's grow all of us yep 12 hours starting at 8 p.m central time going to 8 a.m the following saturday morning Sorry gonna be a good time guys all right so Doyle, i'm gonna pass this off to you i want to kind of dive okay. into the current state of call of duty season four uh we just got the announcement or sorry we're, we just started playing season four about two weeks ago for cod modern warfare mm -hmm. what is your current yeah. thoughts on the state of things in the game right now and with how call can they improve with call of duty yes all right so here's my biggest thing I don't want to start this out like bitching. I uh, don't know if I can say that on YouTube. You can cut that shit out if you need to. It's just how no, it's it talk fine. sometimes. It's fine. But why is there not ranked play? Why is there not a ranked system? I don't understand. And if one of you guys knows some dev out there that can answer the question, please. <laughs> Let's get the answer. Because it's ranked play. Why do you play a game? You play a game for the for the prestige, okay? What well, they took that away. You get a little token at the end of the season, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with that. But come I'm on, not. give us something here. I'm um, give us something. Give us rank play, like Apex. They threw rank play in there. Flawless, flawless transition to rank play. Give us rank, man. Give us rank Warzone. Try it out. Let's just see what happens. You know? And then like, what do you think about that, Michael? So, the whole badge, I mean, you're sitting there going through this grind for three months, going through an absolute, or two months, going through this absolute grind. And then at the end of the hundred levels, you get a little golden badge that says, congratulations, here's your participation trophy for doing this for us. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And when do you ever get to show that off? That's one thing I do like yeah. about Apex, is whenever you load in, you have your your champion there and it shows like your three badges you can put whatever you want there whatever you want to brag about and that's cool i like that i know it's mostly for you to screenshot and do different things with but i mean that's it i want some kind of badge when you look like whenever you load into a game in like a lobby and it shows your level on the side i want a badge to be right there like i'm diamond level ranked player on modern warfare right 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 or if you beat yeah, a season in a ranked lobby yeah, yeah, exactly. Or if you like beat a season and you get, you know, max uh, level on a season, then you put it on there next to your little name whenever you load into a lobby. Hey, I'm a season four completionist or whatever you want to call it, you know? You know what I, you know what I think may be the problem? Just sitting here, guys, thinking. I've thought about this a lot. I don't know why this is just not coming to me. You know, it, it, let's just say it is true, okay? That the reason that Xbox is locked to crossplay is player count, is the player pool. Maybe dividing it up in ranks is going to divide the player pool up that much more. They can't possibly fill a 150 player lobby with all that rank. You know, that was, that was often a thing in Apex. 
when you get up to like apex predator or like the higher ranks like you would wait forever to get into a lobby like if you watch streamers like uh well, i don't know doc didn't play too much apex but like king richard people like that they would wait forever just to get in the lobby yeah it's like you know that's not good so i don't know maybe if there's like a player pool issue that they're trying to prevent but rank needs to happen they're gonna have to figure that out eventually especially if the rumor's true that they're keeping this meta of warzone around for a while throughout multiple launches that's gonna need to right be changed. exactly exactly no i completely agree i think the current state of it now i agree with the rank part but other parts of season four i just don't think and i think a lot of other streamers agree in the general community i don't think they've done i love what they're doing with the store they're constantly adding really cool things that you could buy I, I mean the tracer packs every time we see a tracer pack we snatch it up that same day it's awesome right but they what literally How this point go ahead, go ahead. this point in season four let's just say for apex there was already huge changes to the map and hell they added a second map by this point right and we haven't seen anything the map's been the same there's been these little easter eggs and little teasers that some things are going to change with the map but literally none of that's changed they've added i mean in the beginning season one or even before season one season zero the gunfight tournaments you know they have done some stuff that we the players wanted you know it used to be just uh the battle royale four people or maybe it was three people but now we got solos now we got duos now we got trips and we have quants that's awesome right. so they're adding game yeah, modes that people want they're adding game modes but just keep adding game modes isn't going to cut it because you're still playing in the same environment. We need to get, we need to do a switch up. Right. Give us something else. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Justin, Justin uh, Graphics here, he just hit us with a comment here. The thing that they don't look at, what doesn't really work, is experience based matchmaking. It sucks the balls. Uh, you're right about that, Justin. Sucks. Nobody likes it. High, uh, high level players don't like it. I don't know. I guess low level players might like it, but I don't think that low level play players are going to like it as much as high level players hate it. You know, like the general populace is like the average KD on Call of Duty Modern Warfare is about like a 0.8. I think most people are going to not want player based matchmaking because it kind of, you know, you get the same result a lot of times when you like play up. It's like Rocket League in, in ranked, man. You get up yep. there and you start getting your ass licked and you're like, ooh, don't like that. So you back down. <laughs> And there's no real moment, like, there's no reason, Michael, no offense, that I got to make my brother the party leader so we hey, can be hey, successful in gunfight hey. duos. I'm sorry I had to say it. We switch to him, we kill everybody. When I'm party leader, nothing. Nothing. Okay? But, that it, Michael, we got to give, we got to give them some credit. Okay? We've been harsh on them. Let's give it, let's, let's talk about the pros. Let's hear it. They've done, they, we beg for duos. Beg, beg, beg for duos. Yep. How long? Since the they game was released. As soon as we played Warzone, we're like, we need duos. It's fun, it's fun to play with friends and stuff for sure. You know, and you're my friend as well. But some there's some nights where there's nobody on and we have to pick up a Randy or we have to play one guy short, which is an immediate disadvantage. Look, what they need to do right now by the way, hardcore shipment twenty four or hardcore scrap drive twenty four seven is gone as of like today. Anyways, take out three v three gunfight snipers only, okay? Yes. Make a permanent, make it permanent that two v two gunfights blueprints is there, okay? And then make a permanent two v two tournament style, you know, bracket, ten teams or eight teams, whatever it is. Make that permanent. Oh my God. Like, why did they take that out? They're like, oh, you got a little taste of it. Let me pull it away. You know it did good. Everybody played it. Everybody wanted the rewards. All I would say is make make it to where, like, maybe the final thing is, like, a random loot item. You know what I'm saying? Like, make the final reward a random loot item. So we're not, like, grinding all the way out for, like, one exotic deal. And then we're done because we don't need it. We don't need to do it anymore. Right, but, but you even look then, at. I would probably still do it. And I do think they're extreme. <laughs> I do think they're extremely guilty of putting these weird price gates on the really good shit. So if you look at the store right now. Do you look at almost any single pack? There's definitely something in one of those packs that you really want to buy, but you have to buy the whole pack. 
But then you look at the battle pass, and there's maybe, maybe five to ten things in that battle pass that I'm like, hell yeah, I want to get that. I'm going to grind to get that. And that's right. it. Why don't we have tracers in these packs? Why don't we have really cool Tra little dangly... <laughs> yeah, why aren't tracers in the battle? Why aren't the tracers, tracers in the battle Tracers are money. Pass? Tracers are money, man. We're it, paying it, money it, for the battle I mean, pass. I, I agree. I agree with you. You should get some sort of tracer. Maybe not make it such a primary weapon. Maybe make it a pistol. Make it something kind of not maybe as useful, but at least then you have tracers. You know what I'm give saying? Me, like, like, give the, me yeah. some tracers. Give me like a, a but, season four specific tracer. Like give me a gold tracer for beating season four. If I'm shooting your ass down with a gold tracer, you know that ooh, I beat season four. Ooh, like a Something like that. set of season rewards. Like kind of like Rocket League. At the end of the season you get, but they have to do ranked. If they did ranked, they could give you season rewards. If you finished in gold, if you finished in silver, Michael, if you finished in bronze, you would get season rewards. You know, that's it. I saw it. Blue eyes, white track. <laughs> whatever place you landed in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they could give you a reward for that. It could be colored tracers. It could be Michael. It could be a spray. Uh, it could be any of that. You know? What are you saying? What? What is it, guys? All right. Last night in the stream, I had my best night. I had my best game. Got 12 kills in Warzone. Good job, dude. No, we won good. the game. Fantastic. We're doing good. But... Yeah, you see my point, though. I want something like if we're in-game and I see you from across and I start seeing you shoot, like, I would love to see, like, a gold tracer or something. I'm like, oh, shit. He just, he was ranked. He was diamond rank in season four. I know what that tracer is. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with this guy. Or, like, if you have above, if you ever achieve, like, above a 2.0 KD after, like, I don't know, like, you get a special something. So when you're spraying across that field... Someone is shitting their pants because yeah. they know you got the damn laser aim, dude. Drip. You're right. You're right, yeah. Justin. You're right, buddy. That's that's all I'm saying. I don't know. That's a good idea. All right, let's uh, let's go on to the next subject. We beat this horse better than yeah, 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 yeah. So while we're kind of still on the first-person shooters, um, I'm gonna turn this over to you. We talked about EA a little okay. bit. Let's talk yeah. about Battlefield possibly going back to a modern-day setting after having two games, okay. Battlefield One and Five, being set at a later time. All right, first things first. Justin, I know you're gonna have some hot, a hot take here. So feel free to say what you want here. Uh, anybody else in chat that is a Battlefield fanatic as well as myself. Anyway, so Battlefield is rumored. I believe I've seen a confirmed deadly that it is a modern shooter. I don't know. You can't believe anything you see on the damn internet here these days, guys. Anyway. Modern shooter Battlefield. This is what they need, without a doubt. They gotta revamp it. Battlefield 5 was a big old bust, guys. Big old bust. It's buggy at the launch. They've stopped supporting it almost entirely now. Barely any content coming out till the next year. They've gotta make a move. And this has been kind of a classic problem, it seems like, with EA. Is it bugs, like I discussed earlier, and also that where is their priorities? Where are their resources going? Do they Are they limited on resources? I mean, what's the deal? You know? Something got to give here. But a modern shooter, what they need. So and you're all in. That's more than 16 bullets. You know what I'm saying? You got to finger punch them in. You know, Battlefield 5 made a better move towards that. Battlefield 1 was better than Battlefield 5, and the reloading was shit. But it was realistic <laughs> for the most part. But now we're going to go back to the roof, guys. We're gonna go to a modern shooter. I'm talking HoloLens what era? type shit. What era you wanna see? I'm, I'm wanting 2020. Jesus. That's what I want. From now or like within 10 years forward or backwards from right now. Yeah, I, I did prefer... see a rumor. I seen Gulf yeah. War. Gulf War? And then I also seen like early 2000s. So it's not like crazy drone shit, but it's still, you got really long range snipers. You have decent modern stuff, you know? Yeah. So you're all in favor for this new uh, modern setting for Battlefield. They need you're it. all for it. They need it. Everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. And the, the biggest thing about Battlefield that I love, you know, they may be buggy, okay? But like as far as the mechanics in game, as far as, you know, any sort of engine that they have with bullet drop, damage, uh, destruction, collapsible worlds, they slap people in the face. 
You know what I'm saying? Every single yeah. time. Make a modern shooter, like Call of Duty World War II. Let's be 100% real. I was not a fan of the game. Then they made really? Battlefield 5, World War II. I, I didn't, I was not a big fan of that. And the reason is when they made Battlefield 5, it was like that on steroids. It was like, holy shit. This is what it should look like. This is not what it should feel like. You know what I'm saying? That's that's where I was at with it as a general consensus. Yeah. Uh, Justin here, back to modern is where Battlefield pushed away from Todd and have its huge following. They should have stuck with it 100%. They try to change it up too much, Justin. I think we can definitely agree with that. They try to change it up and mix it up. And I don't know if they're trying to pay respect or what they're trying to do, but- uh, I'll tell you what it was. Definitely what was it, Monty? I'll tell you what it was. So we've seen a steady progression since the 90s and early 2000s. You think of all those games that started off. You had your CODs, you had your Battlefields, you had your Medal of Honors. That started off really dated back in the day. Mm -hmm. Early World yep. War One, World War Two, And we slowly pushed the progression from those games up to modern day and future modern day. All right? Future yes. games. And we started doing that. All right, and then there is this the whole the whole uh, what's it called the community was so diluted with all these ultra modern games that they're like, all right, let's scale it back. We see Battlefield do it, and we see Call of Duty do it. They both scale back. Let's go back to something yeah. you know in the very the past. They both did that. <laughs> yeah, and now we see that uh, Modern Warfare or Call of Duty they've kind of found an even ground with Modern Warfare. It's not ultra in the future, like we had Infinite and Black Ops 4. Right. But it's it's a good middle ground. I think Modern Warfare is a good middle ground. We'll see what Battlefield does. If they try to go ultra, yeah. I don't see them going ultra. I don't see them going ultra futuristic. I, God, I hope they don't. I hope they don't. That'd be awful in Battlefield. Justin, I think you're 100% right, my man. If they make a Battle Royale along with the new modern setting, they will get their numbers back. 100%. Man, Battle Royale is just... It's almost like an accessory at this point. Like you have to release it with your game. Yep. And if you release it with your game as a free to play option, people Bingo. get in there, they feel out the mechanics and they're like, damn, I want more. You Bingo. know, that's kind of what I think that happened with Call of Duty. I don't know exactly what the sales are, but when you made Warzone free, I came back to Call of Duty because they made yep. Warzone. We both did, 100%. I mean, that's what got me back to it. It's just like, it's such a clean, it's my, the best battle royale, in my opinion, that they that has been made. For me, personally, that's a personal opinion, but they've done a fantastic job. Battlefield, on the other hand, with battle royales in the past, awful. Yeah. Firestorm, but, like, all they have to fix is the guns are not made for battle royale, I don't feel like. And the second thing, why is picking shit up so hard to figure out? Like, just tap a button and it picks it up. It's like the box, of the theoretical box around what you're supposed to pick up is off. And like, shit stacks on each other and you can't pick it up. It so is. like, Call of Duty has figured it out. You know, Battlefield That's... is always, in my opinion, outdone Call of Duty in so many different ways. Do Battle Royale, make it better. I wanna see that happen. And that's one thing, just really quick to wrap up, you know, this topic. But with Battlefield, I do agree with like the whole the hitbox per se of picking items up. That was one of the first things I told you about or mentioned to whenever I first started playing Battlefield 5 was the healing. Yeah. It was so much more difficult to heal somebody. I have to be physically looking down at you eye to eye to heal you. Well, it locks you in an instance. It locks you in an instance that you can't really get out of. Well, you can get out of it, but it, you do get locked in like the specific instance where you have to be in a certain position. Yeah. Unlike uh, Battlefield 1, you get the damn cow needle and you just stick them. Anywhere you can, you stick them. Battlefield 4, you get the old defibs. You just juice them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, do something yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, Justin just hit us right here, Michael. What is your guys' opinion on the old Battlefield classes? Should they stick with that or move on to a COD style? They need to stay with, uh, they need to stick with the classes, in my opinion. I would too. I, I don't want them to copy too much. To have people that... Yeah, I mean, like, one of the big things for Battlefield for me, Michael, I don't know what your answer will be, but it's like, you know, I want to run the recon tonight. There's so many different strats that are very character-specific, you know? Just I know you know, you're a hardcore Battlefield guy. Like, I want to run a recon, you're going to run a strat, you're going to run the players, you're going to run all this other shit. 
you know, if you're a Saul, you're going to be taking out the, you know, there's different strats. I think that's fun and innovative, and I think they need to keep that around. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's go ahead and move on to PS5. Before we do, we do have a comment from Kill1940. He says, what is the best Forza Horizon? I I personally, oh, Dolph with the Forza Horizon 2. I really think it's the third one. Um, obviously, the first one just did so many things for the whole industry as far as the racing, you know, games goes. It kind of changed the whole meta as far as what a racing game could be. So you got to give some props to Forza Horizon 1. Dolph saying Forza Horizon 2. I really enjoyed the Australia one, the setting. I really enjoyed Forza Horizon 3. Everyone's a banger. 10 out of 10 every single time. Those games are great. 100%. Joe with the lark. See you, baby. All right, next topic right, we want to talk about, guys, is going to be the PS5 event that went down. All right? This just happened last week. A lot of cool things about it. Dole, have you seen any pictures as far as what the PS5 looks like? Have you looked at that? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen the, uh, the Wi-Fi router and everything that comes with it. What are your thoughts on the, the general look? So PlayStation, they changed yeah. their they they changed their controller to what it is now with the white one with the dual layer and stuff. It's called like dual force or dual not dual sense. It's called dual Yeah, it's dual sense, right? It was dual shock, now it's dual sense. And they completely changed the look of their actual console. What's your initial take on the whole look of the controller and the console? What do you think? Yeah, so the look of the, the console, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of it, honestly. <laughs> Wi-Fi engaged, but I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of with the Xbox side of things, but I mean, console's a console right now, but I think the console work thing just has to end in the first place. I shouldn't be an advocate of what I've been talking about. Uh, you know, it, it's just pretty much dead. It should have died after the 360 PlayStation 3 era, but it looks good. Uh, they're both going to have SSDs. I mean, it's going to be, both of them are going to be disgusting. The general look of it, I don't, I'm not a big fan of white. The white and blue, it's a little a little weird for me. But just that's my personal opinion. I'm sure they'll have different colors and skins and everything else that you can oh, yeah. do to it. So, And not that I'm extremely crazy about the Xbox, how it looks. I mean, it is a box. They're not lying to you about it. <laughs> yeah, I you agree. Know? So... Um, going through like the PS5 event, we're looking at uh, gameplay right now from Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, so just in the specs versus the two Xbox Series X trumps the PS5. It definitely does as far as raw power. If you look at like the SSD and the loading times, PlayStation does have the Xbox beat on that. But if you look at general just raw power, processing power, the Xbox has got it hands down. 100%. Now me and Dole, we're both Xbox guys. I do, I mean I personally own you know PS2, PS3, PS4. We will be getting a PS5 on day one. Um, you know, for the exclusives, but we're just so bought in right now to the ecosystem of what Xbox has going on for it with the Game Pass, all the great things they have going on with gold, with the X Cloud that's coming out, uh, with the just general backwards compatibility. I mean, I just downloaded Destroy All Humans for the original Xbox that was live with gold for <laughs> Xbox Live Gold. Come on, dude, that's Don't sick. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm gonna, I definitely want both. Okay, definitely want both. Because there's some exclusives on PlayStation that, you know, you just kind of got to be a part of. Yeah, the, so the main things with this, uh, the reveal was Horizon Zero Dawn for me was that, which is what we just seen and we are watching right now. The new Ratchet and Clank game Ooh. looks sick. I'll go ahead and pull that up it now. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pull it up now. And also the new Spider-Man game. So it's not a direct sequel to the Spider-Man 1. It's more or less a... Miles uh, Morales is in it, right? He is. That's going to be the main guy. Um, so it's just, they said it's an 8 to 10 hour game. It's a quick game. It's just a filler game, uh, basically. Unpopular opinion here. Spider-Man, uh, Enter the Multiverse is the best Spider-Man ever created. What, the movie? The movie is the best. It's absolutely the best Spider-Man ever made, in my opinion. I can't, but the game, the game that shocked me the most, dude, was Ratchet and Clank. As far as like I what not any of that. this game gave just a huge demonstration as to what the PS5 can do. All right. So as you watch this video, it's, now you really see the loading times really shine here. As he goes through the different rifts and the different portals and stuff, you see the instant change in between worlds. And it's absolutely amazing. I'm glad they're bringing Ratchet and Clank back. This is one of 
our favorite games that we played growing up for sure. This game, dude, looks so oh. great. I, dude, I love Clank. I love Clank. I just want to get a Clank tattoo. I really do. He was so funny, man. Whoever whoever created the dialogue for, for Clank is just... Give that guy, buy that guy lunch. Dude, look at this. <laughs> look know, how good this look looks. This shit. Look at the ray tracing. Look how oh, great man. the shadow... Look, no, look. Different portal. Boom. Instant loading Ooh. time. Instant. Brand new world. Traveling. Boom. Again. Here's obviously the loading screen. Boom. New world. This is gameplay. Could you imagine somebody being like, nah, I'm going to play some Pong. <laughs> it's amazing, what? dude. Now, you can see that little riff, this little two seconds right here. This is obviously acting That's as the loading, loading screen. screen. Yeah, bam. It's, becoming, You're it's like artistic. It's like artistic, exactly. man. You don't even notice excited, it, and it works. These, these, these studios, they're going to have so much to work with now, man. They're going to have so much to work with. So yeah, much dude, real it, estate. It's amazing. But I, I overall thought the PlayStation event was awesome. They definitely did way better than that GDC event, which is... You know, more of a corporate thing, but excited about these three games: the Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Ratchet and Clank. Those are the big bangers right now, for sure. Looking forward to them. Give any last points on this before we move on to our, our last couple topics? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. So next one, guys. Last topic that we have for you for tonight before we jump into some COD and get cranking on that. Or sorry, I should say, I should say clanking. So just talk about Ratchet and Clank. Um, this is gonna be. <laughs> is Rocket League. The current state of Rocket League. Uh, so hold on a second, Michael. Justin, off top of it, you guys see that Cyberpunk was pushed back a month? Yeah, man, we discussed that uh, at the very, very beginning of this uh, this podcast. That was our first topic. Did see that. It's kind of a bummer, but they got to do what they got to do, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, and Kill uh, feels so odd going off Forza and going on Project Cars. is very different feel. Project Cars is that more of a simulation-y feel for sure. Um, but yeah, they both have their pros and cons, 100%. Looking forward to the sequel to both of those games. All right, so going on to Rocket League, current state. Current state of Rocket League, guys. Uh, well, I've, we've talked about it on streams a lot. I've raged about it, the current state. Um, I think the big thing that really got us hooked was not just the, the fun atmosphere and the fun gameplay was the rewards and the reward systems that you would get as you're going through battle passes. And it was so easy to get just absolute banger stuff randomized from chess. Right. And now they've put fun, this man. now they've put this paywall. Let's 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 hold on. Let's tell them who did this. That's what's right. important. Okay. So if anyone's unaware, this transition was not just random, okay? Psionics was bought out by Epic Games, people who make Fortnite. And once they did that, you know, the suits, I would assume, bought. They just wanted to destroy the game. That's my opinion. They had it out on it. They literally are ringing that sucker out like GTA 5. They are squeezing every last drop of money out. They destroyed the market because of the money game. And uh, that's kind of where we're at now. And it's unfortunate because. If you get a black market blueprint, there is a zero percent chance of just naturally unlocking that with a key. You're gonna spend yep. twenty dollars worth of yep. credits or twenty dollars of your own money. That's unrealistic. Man. Twenty dollars, guys. Yeah. For a 20 skin. Twenty dollars. And That's you know, before is. there's a chance like you could get black market stuff. I've gotten black market stuff. It's just, they, they kind of ruined it. It's unfortunate. Right. The game's mechanics doesn't change. You know, it's still fine and competitive. But the trading, the trading is, is pretty much dead. If that's what you're into. But that's the side of this game that we're discussing. But it just goes right. to and show that's what happens, man. There's a lot of these guys that are money hungry and they're not really, I mean, I know that's what they're here for is to make money. But also, too, there's a very good balance. Like, if somebody loves the game and they want the skins, like COD, Warzone, Cod, I'll buy skins and shit because I like the game that much and I don't feel like it's unnaturally priced right and I really think that that was something whenever Epic Games bought them up was they looked at the business model and said you know what there is more money to be made here than what they're doing now 100% 100% and, and their defense they did decrease the prices 
of what it takes to buy these things. But back in the day, it didn't cost any money. You would get into a game, say you got your XP, you reach a certain XP cap to level up, and you would get a chest. You'd open up that chest, yeah, boom, you got a black market item. It's yours. Now you get yeah. a, there is not even a chest. You just reach a level and you get a blueprint. Yeah, blueprint. Yeah. So you earned it, Damn. but now you have to buy yeah. it. It's yeah, ridiculous. halfway there. It's like 10% there. It's pretty, it's pretty weird. Pretty Absolutely weird, ridiculous. man. Uh, Gambaro, even the fellas, glad to be back. Thanks, man. Thanks for stopping hey, hey, back hey, by, hey. dude. How's your day been, man? Graphics, don't know much about that game? Yeah, I understand, man. Some people don't play it. Uh, we just want to touch on the, you know, pretty much how it was ruined in a lot of ways, the trade by big games. But anyways, yeah. uh, I think that's pretty much the whole podcast for tonight. Yeah, it is. So uh, thank you, guys. We, we're we not done the stream. That's just the podcast portion of it. So no. uh, we're far from done. Uh, we want to thank you guys for joining in for this sec this uh, segment of the stream. We are going to be doing, as we said before, in the very beginning, we're going to be doing releasing this on Spotify and iTunes and all that good stuff once per week. It's going to be a weekly little podcast thing that we're going to be doing every single Thursday. And you guys can join in live for the first hour of our streams and uh, talk and discuss and bring up different topics and things like that. Uh, so this should be coming up on our YouTube page as well. You guys will be able to see highlights and different things popping up on Twitter. So make sure you go follow us on there. Also, yep. Doyle, you want to go ahead and tell them about the event just to wrap up this this point yes. uh, next Friday? Yep. Uh, Protocol Droid RP2, he's been hard at it, guys. Hard at hard. it. Uh, again, credit to uh, our buddy Mal Juan for the idea here. But, guys, June 26, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We are going to host a 12-hour stream, okay? It's going to be a Call of Duty stream. Every two hours, if you're following in the chat, you'll have a chance to be randomly selected to get a thousand COD points. That's going to buy you a COD battle pack or something else from the store, obviously. So every uh, so that'll be six total uh, six thousand COD points will be given away at that night. You got to be in the stream, and also too, you can only get it one time. So if we got like one dude in the stream, he's not going to keep popping it. So if, say there's three people in the stream, he wins it. About the other dude with it, you know, you're probably gonna be next. So just letting y'all know kind of how that works. But that is June 26th, more on the calendar. Uh, follow us on Twitter, especially if you guys aren't following, and uh, we'll definitely keep you updated on there. Also with some sick tricks and clips. <laughs> 100%.